cataractcoach.com. Rescue this aphakia and iris damage. So scleral sutured eye wall and a pupiloplasty. Now this patient had surgery done elsewhere and you can see patient's left aphagic, no caps or support, iris damage. What are you going to do here? Well, the first thing is you're going to listen to the Cataract Coach podcast every single week, a brand new podcast, an hour long of the secrets to success in ophthalmology. Literally, you must listen to this podcast. You will learn so much. It's everywhere where you find podcasts. Now, certain here is doing a pyridomy on each side, about 180 degrees apart. And this is probably going to be for the scleral fixation of the eye well. I'm watching the video for the first time with you. So it looks like marks that are made two millimeter behind the limbus. And then let's see another two millimeters on either side of that. So maybe four millimeters apart. So let's see, perhaps you're going to use a flange technique with 6 proline. Perhaps surgeon's going to use a Gore-Tex suture. Let's find out. We're going to find out here. So here's a paracentesis and AC maintainer. That's always helpful. Now I'm guessing this patient already had a vitrectomy too. I don't see any vitreous prolapse at all. And here we go. We've got the eye well in the injector with the two haptics uh, exposed. And then here's that pro, uh, you know, Gore-Tex. That's the 8-0 Gore-Tex. And now you can see the eye well delivered. Interesting technique that of threading it ahead of time. And then now threading it through, pulling the sutures through. Now remember, this Gore-Tex suture is pretty slippery. So you have to suture it and tie the knots very tightly. Make sure the knot is secure. And then so now you've got a suture on either end. So this, this eye well has four eyelets. And so here comes that suturing of the Gore-Tex. So make sure the knots are square. That looks pretty good. Get that knot all the way down. Now don't pull too hard because you'll cheese wire it through those haptics. So this is good, nice and secure. Now this knot needs to be secure. So nice square knots, a 3-1-1 suturing. There we go. And then we'll cut those on the longer side. And then those have to be rotated into the eye. Do not leave big knots like this under the conjunctiva. I promise they will erode through. Beautiful. There you go. Surgeon using micro forceps to get that knot rotated into the eye. Very nicely done. And that's going to be a very secure position. Now, where does the eye wall optic sit? It's about the same plane as if you had the eye wall in the bag. So your eye wall calculation should be just about the same for in the bag. Maybe add an extra half diopter to the lens power just to make sure you don't end up hyperopic. Now, surgeon is using looks like a 10O proline or polypropylene in order to suture this iris defect. Now, to suture this, you can use that fourth row pupiloplast that we learned from Uggerwall. But remember that don't put sutures in parts of the iris that are too atrophic. Because then what happened is as you tie the knots down, it just cheese wires through and you'll break, you know, through the iris. But here the surgeon does a very nice job of getting good solid bites of iris stroma. And now you can use this knot technique, seeps or not here, and tie that together. And look how nicely that comes together. So beautifully done here. That just looks great. Now it may take a couple different sutures. So again, this is the fourth row technique which is just basically four loops and then tying it shut. And then here comes another um, suture being passed, tenopolypropylene, again, through that iris defect. And I like the use of a uh, hollow bore cannula on the other side to help guide that needle out. Here comes the suture end, get that loop out of the eye, and then again, pass it through four times, one, two, three, four, and then you can cinch this knot down and it should give you quite a nice anatomic result. Now, the goal here is not to have too small of a pupil. You don't want a pinhole pupil for most cases. In a case like this, you just left with about a three and a half millimeter pupil. That's about perfect. It'll look good from conversation distance. It'll give good visual performance to the patient, and you'll still be able to examine the retina here. At the end of the case here, just a little bit of a wash out of the anterior chamber, and then sealing up the incisions. And that looks pretty good. Now, I know it doesn't look perfect, but you can't make it perfect with the prior damage. But this is going to be beautiful from conversation distance. And it's also going to give the patient a very good functional outcome here. Now, at the end here, closing up the conjunctiva. And then you still see the, the Gore-Tex suture under the surface of the conjunctiva. We do have a technique. If you go to cataractcoach.com, the website, yeah, leave YouTube for a second and search the word Gore-Tex, you'll see that we have a way of doing 
intrascleral passes of the Gore-Tex, so you never see those two white bands under the conjunctiva. Yeah, check it out. You'll love it. And remember, our podcast every single week, Apple, Amazon, Google, Spotify, wherever you find your podcast, you will love this podcast.